In this video you'll see how to use Google Sheets to create a scatter graph and calculate the correlation for two sets of data. We've got the data here for a group of students who took three exams, one in maths, one in science and one in English. Um, we're going to look at the correlation between maths and science. Now first of all we're going to produce a scatter graph and we can do that easily because the two sets of data are in adjacent columns A and B. I'll just before I do that though, I'll just talk about what would happen if you had maths and English so the data weren't adjacent to each other, there was a gap, they weren't contiguous, we had the science in between. There's two solutions. One, you can select the first set of data, in this case maths, and then on a PC hold down the control button, on a Mac I believe it's command, and click and drag and select the second set. It doesn't matter that you've selected one top to bottom, one bottom to top, um, the spreadsheet will work out, work out what to do with that. So you can see that they're both selected now and that's one solution. An alternative approach is to select the first column of data, in this case maths, and we'll copy that data. You can get to that through uh, the menu here but it says control C, I'm using a PC, it's command C I believe on a Mac. So um, if we select that and copy using the keyboard and then we can go over here and control V command V on a Mac, we'll paste it, and then do the same with the second column of data, copy and paste, uh, and we have the two columns next to each other, so we could then select those easily to graph them. Um, anyway, back to our maths and science, since they are next to each other, we can just select them. Um, I like to select from the bottom up because it avoids issues with scrolling, and then we're going to insert graph. Now, insert chart is on your chart menu, um, but there is actually a button I've uh, reduce my screen size so it's on the more option here and you've got the insert chart option so we click on that and we immediately get some options for the kind of chart now uh, in this case Google Sheets doesn't seem to have chosen wisely on the graph it's plotted the math and science scores as two separate lines what we want is a scatter graph which we can see down here and so we'll select the scatter graph and click on insert we'll worry about making changes later and we'll just drag that graph up so that we can view it. Now you'll notice that the graph has a title and the word science and maths on the axes and that's because when I selected the data as you can see here I included the column headings. If you didn't include the column headings you'll need to add the axis labels by hand. Once we have the right graph we can start going about editing it to make it look nicer. Now, now I like producing the graph in my spreadsheet which is what Google Sheets does immediately to check that I've got the right graph but when I want to edit it and make it look nice I'd rather it was in its own sheet so to do that we click here if you're in Excel or numbers I think if you right click in some white space here you'll get this menu and um, click here and we'll say move to own sheet and here you see chart 4 it's a separate tab we've got a much bigger chart and we have our edit options there There are a few features in this graph that I'd like to change. Uh, first of all, I want to remove this uh, legend here, the label that says science, because it's not terribly helpful or informative. And also I want to add a trend line. I want to add a line of best fit. So I'll click on Advanced Edit. And here we go, Customization. Um, we can see straight away legend on the right. If we click on that and say None, that removes the legend from our chart. Um, and adding a line of best fit. Well, we have to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and the final option is trend line. Now some more options will appear at the moment. It says none but if we put a linear that's a straight line uh, line of best fit. It's best to start with that unless you are using an unusually different data set um, and then we have some options here. Label custom it can give us a label if we want um, and we can show some other information about it here. We can play around with the colour. I want it to stand out a bit more so I'm going to do it in a, a shade of red so it stands out a little bit more. Um, make it more opaque and maybe make it a little bit thicker as well so it stands out even more. Um, opacity is the how shaded it is. As you can see it's a little bit transparent so if we up that to 80 it's a little bit more bold. Okay, and here is our graph, our scatter graph with our trend line. Now there's a lot of other things you can do. You might decide that you want this scale to start at 25 degrees and this one too to start at 25 just to go from 25 to 70. You might decide you don't like the fonts or the colours or you want the axes to be a bit blur, a bit more, a um, bit thicker. Sorry. 
or you want the axis to be a bit thicker, you can do all that on the Advanced Edit tab. So if you just click on Advanced Edit and Customization, you get a lot of different options here. It's just a question of playing around with those to get the graph looking exactly how you want it. So we've plotted our scatter graph and put a line of best fit through the data and it looks like we've got reasonably good positive correlation but we don't know how good. So let's go back to our data and look at just how good it is. We'll click back on the scatter graphs tab here to go back to our data and I've already put correlation, maths and science. So I'm going to work out the product moment correlation coefficient PMCC or R value for this data. You might know it just as the correlation coefficient. So there's a formula in Google Sheets and this is in other spreadsheet software as well. We'll type equals and we'll start typing the word correlation and as you can see it comes up with Pearson product moment correlation coefficient and the formula is coral. We'll click on that and it asks us to select data Y, data X. Now it doesn't particularly matter which way around we set, select the data. So we'll select the maths data first. Notice this time I'm not selecting the column heading, a comma, and then I'll select the science data, close the brackets and press enter. But before I press enter you'll see it's already displaying the result up there of 0 0.62767 etc. Um, that's a reasonably good positive correlation as we saw from the graph. Uh, we'll just click on that a moment. If we think well that's a few more decimal places or significant figures than we need, these two buttons here increase and decrease decimal places can change that quite quickly. Um, if we just click on that a few times you'll see um, it reduces the number of decimal places. We'll go to three significant figures or three decimal places there. 0 0.628 is our correlation.